If you're looking for a way to bring some color and life to a landscape during the dreary winter times, then you should consider planting cool season bulbs, rhizomes and corms. Here at Agriculture Academy, we are passionate about sharing our expert knowledge with you. On our channel, you will find videos on plant propagation, tips for starting side hustles, animal husbandry and everything in between. In this video we are going to take a look at how a commercial nursery grows Watsonia, a corm indigenous to South Africa. We will first discuss some Watsonia background before we dive into the cleaning, dividing, planting and watering processes. If you like what you see and hear in this video, then check out the description for your own downloadable copy of our ebook. With this in mind let's get started. Watsonias are flowering corms native to the coastal western Cape region of South Africa. It is especially well adapted to the sandy, well-drained slopes of this area. When grown in the wild, Watsonias are stimulated to grow flowers after fire events, which kickstart seed production. These plants are semi-hardy and make wonderful garden plants. They are also very easy to care for, requiring little inputs other than the odd fertilization and pruning. Watsonias are deciduous bulbs and grow during the autumn, winter, spring and early summer times. The bulbs enter a dormant period during the hot summer months. When in flower, they make beautiful additions to any garden with the tall leaves and striking blooms that stretch above the foliage. A single flower stem 2 meters high can produce up to 20 individual flowers, which will gradually open from the bottom upwards. These flowers are a nectar and pollen gold mine for pollinators like solitary bees and some long-tongued fly species. The foliage and flowers are produced by an underground corm, which is about 5 cm in diameter and is surrounded by a protective layer called a tunic. Unless they are grown in especially cold climates the corms can overwinter in the soil and in these instances only need to be dug up and divided every three years or so. When planting Watsonia corms make sure the soil has excellent drainage. Place your plants in an area that receives a good amount of full sun during the day. While they are adapted to the winter rainfall of the Western Cape, if they are cultivated in a well-drained soil they will benefit from a summer irrigation scheme, whether it come in the form of rain or sprinkler water. Just make sure to not overwater your corms because it can negatively affect flowering the following season. Given this, Watsonias are a great choice for water-wise gardens. As Watsonias are dormant in the heat of the summer, the planting procedure was started at the end of February, towards the end of summer in the Southern Hemisphere. To disinfect the corms, a 200-litre barrel was filled with water. 250 millilitres of a systemic fungicide was then added and the solution was stirred. A systemic fungicide is effective in preventing disease in the corms as it is taken up through the surface and transmitted throughout the growing plant, thereby effectively killing internal pathogens. Next, each bag was dunked into the fungicide solution. It is easiest to clean all the corms while they are still in their mesh bags. Not only does this minimize the manpower required, but also keeps the corms separated according to cultivar. The corms were left to soak for about 30 seconds but the specific times will differ based on the fungicide of choice. After the corms are removed from the fungicide solution, they were left to air dry in their mesh bags. If you were wanting to divide your corms this would be the perfect time to do so. You can either remove the new corms or cormals, or cut the corm into smaller pieces. If you would like a more detailed description on how to do this, then check out the video linked above. Before the corms are planted, the soil is mixed. Like most corms and other bulbous plants, Watsonia require a well-drained mix. To facilitate this, a bark compost was combined with river sand. The plastic pots were filled with the mix and transported to the growing area. It is easiest to plant the corms while the soil is dry so holes can be easily made. Special care was taken to keep the different varieties separated and labeled. The corms were irrigated with an overhead sprinkler system, and the pots received a good soaking daily. The nursery was still experiencing high temperatures at this time which warranted higher irrigation rates. 
If you are in a cooler environment, you should irrigate your corms less frequently. You can amp up the watering once the corms have started to actively grow. After two weeks, leaf shoots started to appear. This is a good sign that the corms are receiving a balanced amount of water, and that the mix is well draining. And that brings us to the end of this video, we hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye out for a future video on these corms as they begin to grow, and we will cover aspects such as fertilization, pest and disease management and other factors relating to the care of Watsonias. Remember to check out the description for your link to your ebook and we will see you in the next video.